نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أعين على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا رب العالمين this, uh, this reminder is going to focus on three parties number one us number two the angels and number three Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord and to help us understand the relationship in this special night, at this special time between these three parties, we need to use one of the greatest gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us in the Quran, and that is the Surah of Qadr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدْ أَعُوذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ And this ayah is extraordinary. Because in just this one single ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes His majesty, the majesty of the Qur'an, and the majesty of the night of Qadr itself, just in this single ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to Himself immediately, inna, in the plural. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, but He refers to Himself in the royal majestic we. Nazalna, we have sent, anzalnahu this book. We have sent it down from high above. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes to Himself, his exaltedness and His Highness from above the seven heavens, above His throne Jalla wa'ala in a manner which befits His Majesty and He sent it and He doesn't even have to say the Qur'an and this is as the ulama said a majesty of the Qur'an that it can only be something so amazing and just referred to in a dhamir as it we have just sent it down because it is with us all the time it is the single most important thing that we have that's what we have sent down. Think about it. Doesn't want to give us yani, the clear name. And this is the way, as the ulama said, in balagha, in rhetoric, in, in eloquence, in Arabic eloquence, to establish and to emphasize the importance of something. And in a layla, Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this night a very interesting name. He called it Laylatul Qadr. And he mentions this word three times in the surah. Here, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Second time, لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهَرٍ Three times it's mentioned. And it's appropriate that there are three key meanings to the meaning of Qadr itself. The first, as Ibn Abbas radiallahu an said, is that it is from the literal meaning of Qadr, i.e. the decree, i.e. what's going to happen. And this has all been written in the Lawh al-Mahfuz, the preserved tablet. But on this night, Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the angels that decree the Qadr, those who control the winds and control the weather and control life and give death and take the soul. The entire year's actions and decrees are given out to them in this night. And this is why it's called Laylatul Qadr. And the second meaning for Qadr is that it comes from the meaning to restrict and Qadr means in the Arabic to restrict, to make, same th to make something ضيق, to constrict something. And you know why? That's because there are so many angels present on this night that there is no space for them. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says تنزل from the original Arabic word of تتنزل with the ta being taken out i.e. not that the angels just come down and we'll come to that not that the angels just come down to visit us but they have to come and leave immediately because the next group are waiting to come and visit us and give salam and go back but this will come and then the final meaning which is the the most supreme meaning is that it is of glory and power and izzah and that's what qadr means when I say in Arabic qadartuhu or he is yani azimul qadr then we mean that by that that he is a, a great person a great man and why not? Because in this we have set, in this night, Allah subhanahu wa taala has said we have sent down this this book. Wallaha qadr. It's an azim book, and it came down upon the tongue of someone. Ala lisani malikin, the qadr. It came down on the on the tongue of a mighty mighty angel, Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam, and it came down to a ummah. Laha qadr. This nation, Allah subhanahu wa taala, has blessed and made the greatest nation to walk this earth. So this is why it is called Laylatul Qadr, the glorious, the majestic, the amazing night, the night of power. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the next ayah, after setting the scene, and this is always the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, the first ayat always just set the scene, get the people thinking, wake up yani, the souls to who is addressing them, that it is their Lord Azza wa Jal that is addressing them. So amazing, so transcendent, so high, but yet so personal and so close. Wanting to show to us his love at all times, every time. And you think about that. Think about the great people in our, in, our, in our world. The people of importance and power. They feel ashamed to show us too much love. Because it's a sign of weakness. To show emotion is a sign of weakness. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a sign of strength. When he turns to us and he says, I have forgiven you. And he says to you, I have given you this. And he says to you that I love you and turn to me and I will keep on pardoning you. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to forgive and, and pardon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one of power who is not ashamed of this. So this initial ayah, despite his majesty, despite his greatness, has got us in, this, in our mind that we are now about to be told something. Because we do not know about what Laylatul Qadr is yet. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And how will you know what the night of power is. And Adaraka in the Arabic language is, it means to make you know. And you can say Adaraka in this way, Adaraka, and you can say Yudarika. And both are used in the Quran. And Imam Sufyan al-Thawri radiallahu an, he made a beautiful point. He said, and this is the fa'idah of studying the Quran. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times in the Quran says, Ma Adaraka this, Ma Adaraka that. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْتُ الْقَدْرِ What will make you know what لَيْتُ الْقَدْرِ is? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ الْقَارِعَ What will make you know what the calamity is? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحَاقَ What will make you know what the event is? When he uses the word أَدْرَاكَ Then it means that the next ayah he's going to tell you what it is. Because of its importance and its impact upon your life right now. But يُدَرِيكَ means the exact same thing. يُدَرِيكَ means the exact same thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُونَ قَرِيبًا And what do you know? Maybe the hour is close. Maybe the hour is close. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّى In Surah Al-Abasa. And how do you know? Maybe he will be someone who will purify himself. Uh, talking about the one that the Prophet ﷺ turned away from. He wasn't sure, he didn't know what was going to happen to this person. He didn't think that this person had the greater benefit to deal with and to uh, concentrate on. And he turned to someone else in Surah Abasa. He frowned and turned away from this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And what will make you know that this person will become pure? And in these two ayat, what's the common link? We have not been told in the next ayah when the sa'a is going to be, when the hour is going to be. And we are not told how pure the hearts of the people are. That's the difference. Yudarika gives us that doubt and that doubt puts yani, some caution on our actions. And that's why the Muslim is always unsure about yani, his certainty of, of whether he's going to die or not tomorrow. And that's why it keeps him busy thinking and reflecting and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he didn't tell us. He doesn't want us to know. And likewise, if we knew the states of the hearts of the people, then we become arrogant and we'd pass judgment and we'd become yani, the people of Kibar and the people of Kufar and we'd start making people of the paradise and start making people of the Nar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this knowledge away from us as well. And so we never knew the states of the people. And this is a lesson for those people who try to make it that they know the states of the people. Judging that this person is a very good person, which is rare. Majority of us yani, think that he's the worst this and he's bad that and he's this and he's that and people just don't fear Allah and there's a lesson just in this just in this word of Adaraka just in the second verse of Laylatul Qadr but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers it for us Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr there you go this night this night of power is better than a thousand months and it's good news in this statement because it's not a thousand months of our worship because if it was a thousand months of our worship, we'd still be in trouble. Because one, one month of our worship, one year of our worship is like nothing. You look at our definition of worship, and you look at the system of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions of what they understood as ibadah. Really, I mean take a topical issue, taraweeh. 
Taraweeh, we the Muslims, we love to sit there and we argue. Should we pray 8 rakah? Should we pray 20 rakah? Should we pray 36 rakah? Should we pay 41 as they used to do in Medina? They differ and they argue and they split and they don't speak to each other. But they all agree on one thing. It's got to be done in one hour. Huh? It doesn't matter how many rakah it is, but it has to be done in one hour. They come to amazing agreement like this. I don't know how. As soon as, as, you know, as long as it's done quickly, I don't care. Right? But I hate your guts if you do 8 or 20. But as long as you do it quick. Subhanallah. This is our, ment- uh, our mentality. And the prophetic mentality is the exact opposite. We don't care about the rakaat. 8 or 10 or 50 or 100. But we want to pray the whole night. They never used to pray except yani, a third of the night. The average is half the night. The majority of the kibar sahaba. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr an said about my father that when he used to stand with us, he would make his family stand with him. We would start in the early part of the night and we would think that would we have enough time to eat sahri? You think about that. So you, you hear straight away, there's a fa'ida. This thousand months, because it's, it's going to get better, good news. This thousand months is not a thousand months of our worship. Even better news, it's not even a thousand months of their worship. Because the reason this ayah was revealed, according to the Imams, is that the Prophet ﷺ was told about a man from Bani Israel, who for 83 years, 1,000 months, spent the entire night for those 83 years in Salah. The whole night. 83 years. And during the daytime he'd be in jihad all day. And the Prophet ﷺ ta'ajab. He was shocked. That's something we can't do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he saw this, he gave him this night of Laylatul Qadr, I'll give you this person's worship in one night for my ummah. This is the main reason of the revelation of this ayah. And Imam Malik ibn Anas narrates that the Prophet ﷺ was shown the ages of mankind. A'marun nas. And he looked, at, he looked at them and he realized that his nation, the average age, had been decreased. So he turned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw the fear in his eyes. What was the fear? He said that my, my nation will not be given enough time to do enough good deeds to get to Jannah. Because our lifespan has been decreased. And the other nations had more time. They had more length of, of time span to get those things done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Laylatul Qadr. A lifetime of worship in one night. And this is us. And if we stick a fiver in the, in the box in Jum'ah, we think that we've got a place next to Abu Bakr. Reserved. This is yani, the mentality of the masakeen, us, and the mentality of those who understand the reality of this life. Who understand the reality of the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who understand more importantly, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all to be taken just from this single ayah. That it is khayru min alfi shahr, a thousand months of the highest quality of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say days of worship. <coughs> he mentions the night. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the night. And we should recognize that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhana ladi asra bi abdihi layla min al masjid al haram ila masjid al aqsa ladi barakna hawlahu. Subhanallah. Glorified be he who took his slave by night from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, the area of which he blessed completely. The night time. فَتَحَجِّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ And pray a little bit of this night. Rise. وَكَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ يَحْجَعُونَ And little at night would they, would they sleep. The rest of the night is in prayer. قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Stand the night in prayer, except a little bit. The night yani, has been mu'azzam for the people of, of Iman, the awliya, the people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know this is the time. This is the time when no one can see me, where I don't make my raka'ah look very nice so everyone else can think, oh, he's very good. Where I can... Come to the masjid and pray two after two after two because I know there's loads of people there watching and they're thinking this guy really is great. No. In, in the night, 
Not only is everyone else not there, not only is no one can, can praise you and give you encouragement, not even your family, you're by yourself. You're by yourself. We'll see now if you've got what it takes. We'll now see if you can step up to the mark. That's why the night has been praised so much. And this is the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to send down His Qadr, His angels, and His Quran. But we were told, we were not told, yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what will, what will you know about what Laytul Qadr is? But He did not then tell us, Khairun min alfi shahr, but He did not tell us when. Why? He tells us what it is, but does not tell us when. And this is a rahmah for us. How many people can understand in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom? By actually not giving us specific information, He is favoring us. And He has done it with many things. For example, the dua of istijab in, uh, on the day of Jumu'ah. There's an hour, I call it the happy hour. Because it's the real happy hour. The hour in which the dua is accepted. But none of the scholars have reached consensus about when this hour is. They don't know. Most of them say it's the last hour before Maghrib, but none can say with certainty. Why? So that the slave does not leave every single thing to that last hour. And he spends the entire day in dua and salawat ala Habib al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He keeps his mind open. We have not been told about whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with our actions. Because if we knew that we did an action, Allah was happy with it, we become content. And to become content with yourself in ibadah is from the most greatest dangers that the nations before fell into. And we've not been told whether our repentance has been accepted or not. We've been told how to do it, but not whether it's been accepted or not. So we continue in repentance. And we've not been told when we're going to die. So we can prepare. And so that we don't know it's going to be in three weeks' time, so we prepare for it in two weeks' time. This is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, He hides the exact night of Laylatul Qadr, the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th. We don't know. But we, Masakeen, again, we put all of our eggs in one basket and say 27 and that's it. We have this great confidence. It can only be this night and that's it. And you know what? If it's not this night, well, I did 27th anyway. And the Prophet wasallam, look at see how he approaches it. He says, well, you know what? I'm going to go for all 10. I'm going to isolate myself from my family and from business and from, and from the people outside and, and, and. I'm going to stay in this masjid and I'm not going to do anything else except every single second of this day and night of 10 days. I'm going to seek Laylatul Qadr. And this is what the Abd is being told to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Imam al-Razi said in a beautiful statement, he said it's almost as if Allah is saying to the people, I did not tell you when Laylatul Qadr is, because I do not want you to fall into sin. Because, what's this mean? Because the one who out of, out of his desires and out of his weakness of his, of his Iman, misses the night in which he knows is Laylatul Qadr intentionally, then he has greatly sinned. He has, uh, he has affronted Allah Azza wa Jal in the most severe way. Whereas the one who misses it out of shahwa and desires, but didn't know that it is Laytul Qadr. He has sinned, but not as an affront to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And an example of this is a beautiful narration. It is weak, but it is an interesting narration. Where the Prophet ﷺ walked into the masjid of Ali radiallahu an, and they saw a man sleeping for the time for salah. So he said to Ali radiallahu an, he said, wake this man and make him do wudu. <coughs> so Ali said, so he woke up this man, he went back to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you are the most yani, eager of us to, to good deeds. Why did you go and tell me to do that? So the Prophet ﷺ said, and you just think, think about this statement. The Prophet ﷺ said, if I had told him and he had refused, and just think about that, you're asleep and you're woken up. And you know, I mean all of us have hit the alarm clock you know, when it's early Fajr time in the summer, when it goes off and, and you know, you're thinking what's going on and smack. Or something even worse if it's her, yeah? and, she's, and she's trying to wake you up. And you're not there, you don't know what's going on. This is what happens. In the grogginess, in the anger, there's no control. You don't know what happened. They tell you the next morning, you said this, you did that. Me? I didn't say that, I didn't do that. So the Prophet ﷺ recognizing this, he says that, if I wake him up and he refuses, فَقَدْ kafar. He has then made kufr. And if he refuses you, 
Then it's a sin, but it's not a major one. This is the rahmah of the Prophet ﷺ upon his nation. So think then the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his nation. By not telling us so that we don't turn away from him intentionally. This is the same principle. Look at the beauty of the ulama. Look at the difference between us when we read the Quran and we get bored within five minutes. And the ulama. And you know, just to go back to the issue of the, the way, you know, we like to hurry up with the prayer and hurry up with the arabad and whatever. In a way, it's understandable. Shameful but understandable. Because it's, we don't understand what's going on. We can't understand the language. We can't think about it. And... You know, how long can a person, when he's saying things, he has no idea what it means. It's all just words in a foreign language. And he knows, right, I have to be still for this. I have to give respect. But I have no idea what's being said. In fairness, how long do you expect him to stand for? To ask him to stand for more than one hour in such a scenario is asking a huge thing. But then is this our fault? Is this yani, the fault of the imam who's trying to make it long or shorter? Or should the people start to study? Start to get closer to Allah. Start to learn about the one who loves us so much. Because in every other field of life, when we recognize there's a benefit for us, then we run to that benefit. We want to study the benefit. We, we, we hear a business plan, then we go and make the research, we go and get the funding, we go and find the partners, we start, start study the laws and the conditions and what's going to make it break it and so on. So this is make and break for us, as salam our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our make or break. So we must take the onus upon ourselves to try and understand what's going on. What is Allah saying to us? What is going on? What is this message? We are the ones who are responsible. We should take that upon ourselves. And then the next ayah, Allahu Akbar. تَنَزَّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحِ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ Tanazzal. As I said before, Laylatul Qadr has been called Laylatul Qadr because it's night of restriction, because there's no space. Tanazzal. The Malaika, they are here. Salamu alaykum ya Malaika. Because they are here now. They are here now. And you know what? They come and they give salam. And they leave immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they visit his Baytul Ma'mur. 70,000 come and then they leave, never to come back again. And then 70,000 more come. And they give the tahmid and tasbih. And then they leave. And they don't come back again. Just think of that number every single day. And I was, I was in the car park the other day. And I was walking. I don't know why I was looking at my feet. And I saw these stones. And there must be hundreds and thousands of stones. Just in this little few square meters here. And I read Abu Harair radiallahu anh said. In the tafsir of this ayah. That on the night of Laylatul Qadr, the Malaika are more than all the stones in the world. Can you think about that? Does that, Chani? It shakes the mind. And why? The Ithni Rabbihim, with the permission of their Lord, these angels are coming and they're actually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for permission. Which means they want to come here, they want to come down here to us and they turn to Allah and they ask for permission Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them permission go why? because the angels love ibadah because the angels love those who love Allah the angels love those who turn to Allah the angels love the sinners the sinners who stop and turn to Allah so they come they come to give us encouragement they come to give us hope they come to help us. This is their system. This is their way from the beginning. It always has been. And they've taken this upon themselves. Do you know how they've taken it upon themselves? Because they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah created Adam and put Adam in the world and made mankind for the world. What did, what did, the, what did the, the angels say? They were shocked. They turned to Allah. Ataja'alu fiha. What's going on? They couldn't understand. You're going to put in this world a people, someone who's going to make facade, evil, and shed blood, and we come and praise you, and we, we sanctify you. 
Allah says, I know what you don't. And in a very interesting narration, it is called the Qissa of Zuhra. And there's many narrations, and a lot of them are weak, but in the most authentic one, it is authentic to Ka'b al-Ahbar, as a, as a, as a, as a story of the, of the Israelites. That the angels, when they said this to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned to them and said, choose two of the best of you. So they chose Harut and Marut. And they were sent down to the earth and they were given the desires of mankind. And it was not long when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them Zuhra. And Zuhra was the most beautiful woman of mankind at that time. And Zuhra is Venus. And they used to say that she was as beautiful uh, in comparison to the rest of creation like Venus is to the rest of the stars. And she was sent to send fitna upon them to do zina, to, do, to drink alcohol and everything. And the heavens were covered. The angels were not given the opportunity to see this. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the heavens. And the angels were shocked to see what the, the two had fallen into. And they turned to Allah. And that's when they said, Subhanaka la ilma, na, la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana. Subhanaka ya Allah. There is no, no, we have nothing. We know nothing except what you tell us. It was then they realized yani, that of the qadr that we are and that we can be. And that's why the scholars in the very furious debate about who is better, the malaika or the human beings. And the, the answer is the human beings because of what they can be. Because of their maqam in the end. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them that choice to accept or abba or that they refuse. So the angels recognize that. So then they in recognition of that. يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah tells us in the Qur'an that they are the ones who come and they seek forgiveness for us. For the people who believe. رَبَّنَا وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَتَابَعُوا سَبِيلِكَ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابُ الْجَحِيمِ Look at this. Look at the dua. Look at the angels how they... They're on our side. They're praying for us. They're making dua for us. Oh Allah. They, they, Rabbana, wasi'at kulla shay'in rahmatan wa ilma. The one you embrace everything, your mercy and your knowledge embraces everything. Forgive those who repent and follow your way. And protect them and save them from the torment of the fire. Rabbana, wa adkhilhum jannat. Jannat ya adan. التي وعدتهم Oh Allah, oh our Lord, the angel said Enter them into the gardens of paradise that you have promised them وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ إِنَّكَ عَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Think about this Not just making istighfar for us But asking Allah to enter us into his paradise What did we do to deserve that? What did we do to deserve that? But they're here now. Because this is halaqatul ilm. This is halaqatul dhikr where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is mentioned. This is where they love to be. This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people to be. The angels go back to Allah. In the normal circles of knowledge. In the normal study circles. In the normal Quran circles. They go back to Allah. And they say so and so was making tasbih and tahmeed and saying la ilaha illallah. And studying and so on. And Allah says, what were they asking for? They, and he said, the malaika say, they were begging for, for your paradise. Have they seen my paradise? Allah says, no they haven't. So what if they had seen my paradise? They would be more keen for it, ya Allah. And what else are they asking for? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, knows this of course. He knows this, but it's a, it's a teaching for us. So that we understand who Allah is. And we understand who the malaika are. Have they seen the fire that they are asking protection for? No. And if they'd seen the fire, they'd be more stronger in that. What else, O oh angels? Oh, there's a person who's walking by, but he sat down on the edge. He's not really part of the show, but you know, he's taking part. Maybe he's driving past here and he thinks, oh, there's a lot of cars there. Maybe just pop in here and see what's going on. Maybe he's in there somewhere. He had no intention of anything, but he just popped in. Allah says he's forgiven as well. Pardon, and this is the rahmah of Allah. 
This is yani, wah, this is what we're talking about. That's not a normal circle of knowledge. Then what in this night, where millions upon millions of angels are coming down? Salamun. Salamun. Here, hatta matla al fajr. Why is it salam? Why is it peace? Because the angels won't let it be any other way. The devils haven't got a, haven't got a hope in hell. Huh? How relevant is that? They haven't got a hope in hell this night. No chance. That's why they said, some of the ulama said, that in the authentic hadith, one of the signs of Laylatul Qadr the next morning is that the sun is bright, but it's a white light instead of its normal, you know, bright yellow, and the rays come down. But the, night, the, the morning of Laylatul Qadr, the sun is clear, but there's no rays. And they said because of the wings of the malaika, there's so many that they block the rays. The mind can't understand that. The mind cannot understand that. And did you hear, did you, did you realize that in Tanazul Malaika, Warruh, again the Izza for Jibreel alayhi salam, teaching us who the key players are. And Jibreel is a key player. My brothers and sisters, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, the greatest of the great. He comes down on this night. He comes down on this night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him down for us, so he makes dua for us, to send salam upon us. Salam upon us. And don't take the salam of the malaika as some small thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ ضَيْفِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ Did you hear about the story of the guests, the honorable guests of, of Ibrahim, the seven angels? They entered upon him and said to him, Salam. And as a result of this Salam, the fire of Nimrod, when Ibrahim was thrown into that fire, because of the Salam of the Malaika, the fire became cold for him. This is the Salam of seven angels. Seven angels. And in this night, they come in their millions and their millions sending salam upon us. Assalamu alayka ya fulan. Assalamu alayka ya fulan. Oh Allah forgive fulan. Oh Allah forgive fulan. This is the night that we are in at this moment. This is where we are. We don't need to, you know, to make up, you know, rhetoric and catchy lines to tell everyone to worship. All I want to do is everyone just reflect upon the book of Allah and what is happening tonight. I don't need to tell you any ahadith. I don't need to, you know what? I'm going to mention it to you only out of ikhbar. I'm not going to say to you that the Prophet ﷺ said, Man qama laylatul qadr, iman wa ihtisaban, ghufra lahu ma taqaddam min dhambih. That whoever stands in qiyam, the night of laylatul qadr, iman and ihtisaban, in hope and in faith of the reward from Allah, all of his sins are forgiven. But wallahi, I was not going to mention this hadith today. You know why? Because for me, this hadith is not needed. Because when the abd understands that the malaika are here, and he gets that encouragement, that yani, when he is trying to turn to Allah, the malaika will come and help him and support him. This should be enough for all the people to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, hatta matla il fajr. And in the end of this surah, it is all night. And look at the beauty, not just a small portion of it, but the entire night. So much so that just by being here until now, we've taken two portions of Laylatul Qadr because the Imam of At-Tabi'een, Hassan al-Basri said, the one who prays Maghrib and Isha in Jama'ah has taken two Hav from Laylatul Qadr. We have already taken from Laylatul Qadr, insha'Allah. This is the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given to us. And, you know, I think, wallahi, all we need to do is just reflect. Just reflect simply upon, in conclusion, just reflect upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if there was a person who was an outsider from this whole kind of religion and deen, and just like an observer, huh? And he was looking at this, these Muslims, and he would look at Allah and he'd say, you know, Allah is the Lord of these Muslims, and he loves them so much. He loves them so much and he gives and he gives and he gives. And his Muslims, I'm watching them, they take and they take and they take. And in 
What did Allah want from them? But thanks. Nothing else. Just thanks for what's been given. And what did they do in return? A token gesture. The best of the majority once a week. Juma, Or twice a year, Eid. Or once a year, Laylatul Qadr. Or once in a lifetime, the Hajj when he's 60 years old. Token gestures yani, in return from us. So I want to say, step up. Muslims, get a hold of yourselves. It's time we step up. We stand up and be counted. Because, you know, wallahi, this person, he would say, you know what, this has got to be a joke. And wallahi, he's right, it's a joke. Muslims can't be like this. That we live in, in a system Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us everything. He's given us sakina and salam in the dunya. And promised us sakina and salam in the akhirah. And we treat it like some game. Choose and pick and choose, night here, night there. We we'll pray this, leave that. Give this, forget that. We need to stop and just reflect and say, you know what? This is not, we're not doing anyone any favors here. Have some izzah and respect for yourself. We must yani, start to recognize our qadr. We must recognize our, our honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this honor. Step up. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make the change. And I don't mean turn to Allah tonight and go home and make some dua and spend a couple of hours. No. Make a change, change. Just like everyone's here in prayer. Make sure next week, on Tuesday night, on Wednesday night, when it's dead quiet in the middle of the week, that you're also in the masjid. Make sure that those fara'id prayers, you also attach yourselves to them. Make sure that the way that you've controlled your heart and kept it clean from the, the, the spiritual diseases that we pick up, which we're, which we're forced to, to, to bring into ourselves in daily life, but we're able to protect ourselves in i'tikaf. Take that across. The sunnah that you're praying in the masajid all the time. Make it continuous. Step up. It's time to make a change. Yeah? And this is not a joke. And that's all I will say, wallahi, because... You know, all of us, wallahi, we're sinners. There's not a person in this room, yani, who's, who's free from sin. And there's not a single person who does not, yani, need the dua of others and the dua of his self in the best time and the dua of his malaika. We ask his malaika, ya, ya malaika, yani, be, be merciful with us. Give us a good report. Because wallahi, as I am sitting in front of you here, they are here in this room. And it is from your iman to believe that. And you can't see them. But wallahi, they see you. They're sitting here with us. And we have to just, you know, just stop and think about that. They're coming and going and they're amazed. They love this. They think that we are being close to Allah. So let's be close to Allah. Let's give them yani, something to go back and be happy about. This is yani, a time. And I personally, I have a request. And I ask you because... You know, the amount that yani, someone like myself has sent, I am in need of dua than, than any, more dua than any of you can imagine. So I ask all of you, wallahi, sincerely, please make dua for me. I really, really, really ask you. And I'm not joking, I'm not saying that as you know, some kind of humbleness. Wallahi, I'm serious. This is no joke. This is the time. Let's capture the moment. And we ask you, Ya Allah. As'aluka, Ya Allah. Bikulli ismin lak. Sammayta bihi nafsak. Aw anzaltahu fi kitabik. Aw allamtah ahadam min khalqik. Aw istaghfarta fi ilm al-ghaybi indik. Antajal hadha al-Qur'an rabi'a qulubina. Wa nura sudurina wa shifa'an min kulli da. Wa dhihab ghumumina wa humumina. يا حي يا قيوم ويا الله بحضور ملائكتك المكرمين أسألك يا الله ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السم العليم تب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وغفر لنا يا رب إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم وسمعنا رسولك فأخبرنا أنك أنت أنت العفو وتحب العفو فيا الله إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا حي يا قيوم فإن كانت هذه الليلة ليلة القدر فنسألك يا الله أن تقبل منا قيامنا وعبادتنا ودعوتنا في هذه الليلة ونسألك يا الله أن تتجاوز عن سيئاتنا 
وأخطائنا وغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا وعف عنا يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين